So as we're looking at these two equations, we have equal signs in there, so they're equations. These two expressions are equal to each other, and so are these. So we solved this one earlier, and we know that if we plug in 7, I make that equation true. So both of these equations have the solution x has to be equal to 7, very obviously, and a little less obvious. So both of these both have solutions x equal to 7. So when two equations have the same solution, we call those two things equivalent. And you will hear that language a lot in math. Two things are equivalent. We can interchange them. So if I start off with a true statement, like the one that's given, a is equal to b. If I add the exact same thing to both sides, since they're um, equal right now, is it still going to be true? So let's say I add an arbitrary c to this side and to the other side. Is it still true? Yes. So we can work in both orders. If I have something that's in common on both sides, I can remove it and I get an equivalent equation that's simplified. Or, if I take something that's true, I can also add something to both sides, and it's still equivalent. So, in that little box, it just kind of explains what we've got going on. So, we're going to take this example again. We know the solution, but let's solve it using this new addition principle for equations. So, I'm looking at x plus 6 is equal to 13. So... We are only working with addition so far. We haven't talked about subtraction yet. We don't necessarily know that it's true. If I subtract something from both sides, it's still equivalent. So we need to work with addition, because that's what we've just shown. So what do I need to add to both sides to move this 6 or get rid of it? So I need to add its opposite. I need to add a negative 6. And whenever I add to one side, I have to add to the other to also make it true. In reality, we know we're just subtracting, but we haven't shown it yet that we can do subtraction. So, adding its opposite, those are going to be gone. I'm left with x over here. And we have 13 minus 6, and we write it in a more simplified form, which is 7. So we want to be able to manipulate equations using this fact. So, when using the addition principle, we often will say, add the same number on both sides of the equation. Now, this is also true for subtraction. We kind of worked with it already. It's true for subtraction because what can happen? We can always write subtraction as adding a negative, as addition. So... We have this expression on the left, this expression on the right. It's equivalent to saying what? I can take A and add negative C, or I could take B and add negative C. So in reality, we could just make our C's here negative. Still holds true. So now we don't have to talk about this funny notation. We can just write subtraction and roll with it. So one more example, then give you a few to try. We want to solve for x. So I'm trying to get this thing on its own. I need to get rid of 5. So what do I have to do over here? I need to subtract 5. But whatever I do to one side, I also have to do to the other. So again, adding the opposite, those are going to cancel. We're just left with x. And on the right, how many negatives do we have? negative 12 altogether. So whenever we solve equations, we haven't done it so far, we want to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes with this algebra. So I always want to check and make sure when I plug that back into the equation, the original one, does it hold true? Did I solve it correctly? So we always want to do a check. So when I plug in negative 12 for x, and I add 5, is that really equal to negative 7? And it is, because, hello, what do we get over here? Negative 7 is equal to negative 7. So yes, 
negative 12 is a solution. We solved it correctly. All right, so take those two tries. Solve them for x. All right, so what had to happen with our first example? I have a positive 12. I need to get rid of it. So I need to subtract 12 from both sides. So again, it's going to cancel on the left. We just get x. And what are we left with on the right? 8. And if we actually plug it back in and check, does 8 plus 12 really equal 20? It does. So we solved correctly. That is the right solution. I always want to see a check. I mean, I can't physically see your work, but you should always check. All right. Next one. We have a minus 3 that I need to get rid of. So what do we need to do to both sides? Add 3. We always want to do the opposite of how it's attached. So again, add an opposite. It's going to cancel out. We'll be left with 2 on the right. And again, we always want to check. Make sure that it's actually true. So if I take 2, subtract 3, we're left with minus 1. So yes, 2 is a solution to that equation. Always do a check. The next examples that you're looking at, how are they different than what we've seen so far? Now I have some decimals and fractions that are involved. But the concept is still the same. It's just a little bit more work. So as we try to solve this first one, we're solving each of these, but I just didn't want to write it. We need to get x on its own, and right now it's attached to a negative 2.3. So we need to add 2.3 to both sides. So I'm looking at x is equivalent to what over here? So I've got 4, 5, 6, 7, and 12 and 2 is 14. And again, we can always check, plug it back into the original, make sure we got it correct. Now, go ahead and try the next two. Solve for n and for y. So what had to happen here? I need to get n on its own, so I need to add 2.7 to both sides. Because again, they're going to cancel over here. We're going to be left with n. And what is our decimal that it's actually equal to? 11.4. And again, you can plug it back into the original, check and make sure that it actually works. For the second try, what had to happen? We have to subtract 17.6 from both sides. Because again, we're undoing them, trying to get y on its own. So when you do that subtraction, what are you left with? Negative 6.1. Okay. So decimals aren't so bad. We just line them up, do the subtraction, or do it in your head. But what has to happen with these fractions? They're definitely a little bit more work. So I'm just going to section this guy off because we're a little smushed. And I'm trying to get x on its own down here. So I need to move negative 2 thirds to the other side or get rid of it. So what has to happen? I need to add 2 thirds. To the left, add two-thirds to the right. It's going to cancel over here, and I'm just left with x. But what do we need on the right-hand side to be able to add these two expressions together? We need to have common denominators. So we want to work with the smallest one, if we can help it, and... What is the least common denominator, least common multiple between 4 and 3? Hopefully those kind of come off quickly. Or again, we could start with 1 and ask and say, what is my other fraction missing? What is this one missing that the other one has? So we're missing a factor of 3. Or you could have started with 3 and asked, what is my LCD missing that this other fraction has? Factor of 4. So our LCD is 12. So again, to turn 4 into 12, what do we have to multiply by over here? Factor of 3, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. Because in reality, what are we multiplying by right there? Same thing, divided by the same thing, 1. What am I missing in this denominator? I have a factor of 3. To turn 3 into 12, I need a factor of 4. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top. So we're looking at 15 twelfths 
plus 8 twelfths. So now that we have those common denominators, we can add them together. So x is equal to what? 23 over 12. And we want to ask, can I simplify that any farther? So I've got an even and an odd, so I can't take out anything that's common. We can always plug back in and check again, but we're not going to worry about it for right now. So go ahead and take those last two tries. Solve for t, solve for x. You need common denominators to add them together. Okay, so when you add 15 halves to both sides, it disappears on the left and moves itself over to the right. So I'm looking between 8 and 2. What is the LCD that we're working with? It should be 8 because 8 already has a factor of 2 inside of it. So, we already have the least common denominator on the first fraction. So, to turn 2 into 8, what do we need to multiply by? 4. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. Because, again, just changing what it looks like. Not changing the equation at all. So, t is 3 over 8 plus 1 over 8 in that case. 60. Now that we have those common denominators, we can add across the top, keep the same denominator. So t is 63 over 8. And we can't simplify. All right, last down here. Subtracting 12 seventeenths from both sides, we'll move it over to the right. Now we need to build the LCD. What is it in that case? I'm just going to start with the denominator on the left. What is my LCD missing that this other factor has? Factor of 17. So our LCD, if we multiply those together, is 34. So what do I need to multiply 2 by? It's really easy when it's in this case. 17 over 17. Just multiply by 1, changing what it looks like. And I'm subtracting. We need to multiply by what over here to get us to 34? 2. 2 over 2, changing what it looks like. So, we're looking at 17 over 34 minus 24 over 34. So, now that we have those common denominators, we actually do the subtraction. 17 minus 24, we're looking at minus 7 34 And again, we can always plug it back in and check if you aren't sure. It's a good practice to have anyway.